Welcome to Beyond the Shoots is presented by Parasite Systems. I'm your host, Doug Simcox, and I hope that you're having a great day, staying safe, and enjoying this fall weather. Today I'm recording in Taylorsville, Kentucky, and we have a very special guest that we're welcoming back on our show to continue our conversation from a couple weeks ago. He was the 2010 Wrangler National Finals Rodeo Barrowman, and I have his autograph, dated picture, hanging on my wall to prove it. Please welcome <laughs> Rockin' Robbie Hodges. Hey, Doug. How are you, buddy? I am good. I am good. Man, it feels like just yesterday we were talking. You know, I listened to your show the other day. I absolutely love it. Man, you told some really? great stories. Absolutely. Man, I sure hope so. You know, I don't, in, in my business, I hate watching me on TV. I hate listening to my songs. I never watch a show that I'm at, mm-hmm. like on the Cowboy Channel, because uh-huh. it's so weird hearing your own self. But I actually sat for an hour and ten minutes and listened to that, you know, that you bet. part one, and I really enjoyed it. I, 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 it just let me open up, oh, you know. I, you certainly did. We had we had great fun, and man, I thank you so much for for all the sharing. I've got great comp, uh, comments back on it. So, wow. uh, and I'm okay. and I'm hoping that that, and especially when you went back and listened to it, that it opened up a whole new new round of memories for you. Absolutely, oh, okay. it did. You know, and I was really looking forward to the second part of it. You're sort of like uh, a psychiatrist to me laying on a couch. <laughs> Is that right? You know, okay. and I'm just getting to talk about things I never, you know, that that I get to recollect and stuff. I really enjoy it. Great question. Okay, okay. Well, we got a whole bunch of stuff coming your way. We're going to talk. We'll even talk a little rodeo through this, if that's all right. I think that would be great. You betcha. <laughs> a lot of other things to get to. Hey, um, I just got back from St. Tiet. Probably saw that on, on Facebook. And Oh, Festival West End. Absolutely, absolutely. What a great show, dude. I mean, Pyro. It, it's, oh, crazy. It is, it is so much fun to do that. And I, did, I was fortunate enough to get to do that twice. You know, I did it in uh, 2002, and then I uh, – I got to do it again, I think 2012, maybe, Okay. after I've been to the finals. And it's the, it's the weirdest place you'll ever go in your life because um, there's, they don't speak English. Right, right. And, you know, it's, it's, there's a funny story to that real quick. Um, mm-hmm. If I, my dumb redneck side of me, I'm <laughs> thinking, you know, when you go there and you go into the little town, which the little town is probably – about like Seymour, Indiana. It's, you know, yeah, yeah. it's a regular, it's 400 people. It turns into 500,000. <laughs> Close. Yeah, and yeah. Not, not one word of English. No. So if I would, they can communicate enough. Mm-hmm. So my problem was I'd always go in there and say, if I would just say, hello, yeah. can you tell me where the subway is <laughs> right. so I can get a sandwich? Yeah. But I have to do like this. Tell you, tell you, tell me where the assembly is. Yeah. And they just look at you like you got a horn growing out of your head because I thought if I put that French, yeah. hello, it didn't how work? you do in? Not at all. They just look at you. <laughs> so once I learned to say it, just say it like regular people. Yeah. Yeah. And talk to them, they could understand. But <laughs> one uh, of the most yeah. fun places, and I've got to do oh, some man. great rodeos. Yeah. In my, in my career, but that had to be the most remarkable thing the first time you roll that barrel out there, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I didn't understand one word. He said, only thing I could hear was my first year was, I didn't fought 32, better man, Rocky and Robbie Hodges. <laughs> and yeah. he started, and then he goes, blah, 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 some French stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm like, did they just say throw an orange at this guy <laughs> if you don't like him? Or, right. you know, it was right. it's pretty freaky. And then the next time I go, yeah. Um, Sylvain, Sylvan, Sylvain, whichever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I used to call him Sylvania, like the TV. Right. Right. And, uh, yeah, he didn't like that. He <laughs> totally quit calling that, but he, uh, <laughs> uh, he's probably going to listen to this by the way. So I go hope ahead. You know, what a great free. guy. So I go <laughs> to the main town there. I can't remember. There's a big town right down from there. Not Montreal, but three I rivers, go and three rivers. So I yeah. go to three rivers pawn shop. Yeah. One day yeah. and I'm in there. Yeah. So I know this place rocks, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this place is crazy. They cheer when the tractor goes, you know, hey, yeah. Yeah. hey baby. Yeah. Absolutely. So I go buy a $70 Stratocaster. 
Like okay. it was not even that. It was like a first act. It was okay. just a really level one guitar. Yeah. I put a bunch of fireworks on it. Yeah. And I did a lead solo. When they introduced me, I did a solo. Yeah. And when I got through, they timed it with those pyro yeah. things. That's what reminded me of that. Yeah. And I took this guitar and I broke it over my barrel. Oh. When I got through with the solo and just yeah. set it on fire, it was done, you know. <laughs> and that is actually in the pictures okay. that I have now. Okay. And you can see it on the big screen where the flames are coming out of the guitar. It's one of my favorite <laughs> memories. But the 8,000 people in that place, yeah. there was this pause when I went to breaking this guitar. Like, what is this idiot doing? Yeah. And then they went nuts. Yeah. And that was, that was probably... That's the top five are there, Doug. Absolutely. I'm not kidding. You get to play that in front of them. You know, it doesn't matter what you do there. And I'm going to tell you what, um, Brinson does a great job mm -hmm. up there. He has a mm -hmm. home up there. Yeah. He is perfect for that scenario. <laughs> so so tell me about you. Did you eat a lot of uh, gravy and, uh, uh, poutine. and french fries? Poutine. poutine. Absolutely. I had some poutine. I had great food all the way through. And, yep. um, you know, they treated me like a VIP. Sam and I went up there, and we're both VIP. Oh, yeah. I mean, top-notch stuff, right? Yes. Uh, Set on the stage. Mm. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sat on the stage. Got up behind the buck and shoots during the bronc riding. They, right they, on. Let, they let me stay there for a bit. Right. That is awesome. Isn't that cool? And uh, the crowd's absolutely great. And, of course, uh, Sylvain and uh, BJ, just just what great hosts and just what a great show. We got to see two right. shows. Got to see two shows, Wednesday night, Thursday Golly. night. And, and, oh, wow, you got night nice shows. Those oh, are great. Man. Oh, man. And, you know, projection like you would do a PowerPoint onto a screen. They do that onto the arena floor. It's just Goodness gracious. what a show. What a show. It, it, it really is. And, uh, and I mean, it is, you know, when you, when you talk about rodeos in Canada, everybody mm -hmm. wants to say Calgary, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, but everybody doesn't matter which side of the, you know, the fence they ride on or wherever they all know mm -hmm. St. Tit. They so, all know St. Tit. That's for darn sure. It is, Absolutely. You betcha. You betcha. I'm glad you had a good time up there, man. It was a great experience for me. Yeah. Um, and, and they treat you very well up there and, oh, that's cool. I'd like to see old Sylvan. Yeah. 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 Sylvania. Well, he's doing great. He is absolutely doing great. Stock contractor lives and, and right in the town, right? So right, yes. right close. So very, very nice. Yeah. Doing a great that job is, up there. He took that, that over cool. in 1995, Robbie. And at the time wow. they were doing two performances um, in that 10 <laughs> day period, two performances. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And this year they did 11. Goodness gracious. Yeah. They did a rodeo uh, uh, PBR Saturday night at 1130 at night, and they had the place sold out. So, At 1130 at night, at they did a PBR. At 1130 at night, they had a PBR. Absolutely. Yeah. And sold it out. That is so, crazy, isn't man. Isn't that crazy? That is, that crazy? Yeah, but it's just those people up there not like to have a good time, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. That is so cool. All right, I'm gonna. I said we're going to talk a little bit about rodeo. We'll do that in a bit here, but I want to. I want to. I want to have our listeners learn just a little bit about what you did uh, when you weren't rodeoing. Uh, you got a NASCAR connection. You you worked NASCAR for a while. Yeah, I did actually. So here's how that went. My <laughs> first year, yeah. After I, I after I quit riding bareback courses, uh, was I got on one horse in 2000. And, um, so I, I was having trouble with my shoulder popping out and stuff. And I had, you know, two kids and I just said, you know, I, I'm really, really tired of getting beat up. You know, I've got, I've got kids now and, and with Reed, you know, it, with his heart and stuff like that. I was like, we were talking about the other day, I was winning money, but I was not excited about winning, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a recipe for disaster in this game, you know? And so I decided I was going to quit. And everybody's like, man, you need to be a rodeo clown. So I did, you know, I, mm -hmm. I called Bubba Obrey, actually. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, Bubba, I'm fixing to quit riding bareback courses after 16 years. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hang her up. And I said, I want to be a rodeo clown, I guess. Yeah. And he goes, I'll give you five tomorrow. Yeah. Call me tomorrow, yeah. I'll give you five. Yeah. I'm like, holy cow. Because yeah. there weren't a lot of new guys. Well, so then I'm, and that, that, that turned into a pretty successful thing, I'd say. But mm -hmm. the cool part of it, <laughs> yeah. the next year, I'm, yeah. I came in at exactly the perfect time mm. because when I was 
when I was starting, there was nobody new. There was really nothing new created going on. There was in not a lull, but you know, about every five or six years, everything gets used up. Yeah. And then somebody new will come up with something else, and then everybody gets re inspired. Yeah. Yeah. So I had come up with the Elvis Partially Cooking Show Act. Right, right. And uh, it was new. So, I mean, <laughs> pretty much had my run of rodeos for a couple of years. So my second year, I get a call from David Sharp and a guy named Gordon Whitener. Mm -hmm. And they were doing this thing called the U.S. Cowboy Tour. And uh, what they would do is they would go to racetracks and stuff like that. With, it had a captive audience. And they put rodeos on in the parking lots for these folks that are camping Let's mm -hmm. say at racetracks and, mm -hmm. and wherever. So yep. I was doing Atlanta Motor Speedway in March, my second year. Yeah. And uh, we were outside there, and I get to looking around, and I start seeing guys that were kind of familiar. Yeah. Like that I would see on ESPN on okay. Sunday. Okay. Okay. Johnny Benson. Oh, yeah. You remember? I do. Yeah. Absolutely. Mike Wallace, Ron Hornaday was there. Okay. Yep. Um, you know, Terry Labonte, Bobby Labonte. I used his son in an act. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh so I get through with the rodeo that 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 Saturday night and uh there's a knock on my little trailer door and it's Mike Wallace and Ron Hornaday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And one of them didn't make the cup race, so they were and one of them had just raced at the bush race that day. Yeah. So they they might or might have not had a couple beers. <laughs> right, and uh right. <laughs> and I think their exact words were Come on, clown! You're going with us. <laughs> and you hadn't met him before. You saw him on I'd the ESPN. I never met him before. <laughs> yeah, and he says, "Come on, clown! You're going with us." So they're in their own golf cart. Okay. Well, my okay. friend, my friend Bedford Lacey that we talked about last year, the race, you know, last yeah. deal. Yeah. He uh, he's with me, and he goes, "Are we really going to go with him?" I said, "Absolutely, we are." <laughs> so they go, and I said, "Well, I don't have credentials or anything." He says, "You don't need them. Trust yeah. me." Yeah. Yeah. So we get to the ramp going in the tunnel, mm -hmm. how, you, how you get down across the speedway there at Atlanta. Yeah. And Mike Wallace says, hey, clown, get that garbage can right there and roll down that hill like you do in your barrel. <laughs> what? Okay. Well, by then, I probably had a couple. Okay. So I rolled okay. down there, and I hit right in the center of it. You know, there's an in and out tunnel. Okay. And I hit right in the center of it, and they thought they'd kill me while I stood right back up. Yeah. So. So he says, hey, we need a bigger golf cart. So we go down in, in the garage area where the motor coaches are. Right. You got to remember, I've known them my whole 15 minutes right, of my right, life. Right, know? right. We go and steal Kyle Petty's golf cart. Well, really? Okay. Kyle's. Okay. And Hornaday, Hornaday, obviously, them guys know how to go fast. I mean, without yeah. saying, but yeah. he does something with a tie wrap underneath this golf cart. And this thing would, <laughs> I mean, I think... He could have run a qualifying lap. Okay. It would run about seventy. Yeah. And you know, instead of twelve. Yeah. And um so we're riding around. I have on Ron Hornaday's Napa helmet that he raced with. <laughs> really? And Mike Wallace it was cold because it yeah. was still March. Yeah. And Mike Wallace's Winston from the Winston really um uh, jacket suit. on. Jacket. Okay. Okay. Yeah, his jacket. Okay. So, okay. Back up the tunnel we go and yeah. we go to the drunks out in the camp out area. okay okay to the fans to the fans <laughs> trying to find beer right so we'd stop somewhere and like we'd get a hey y'all got any beer no go, oh my gosh yes yeah. come in here and have some beer <laughs> yeah yeah they were like no go away at first you know yeah. and then they figured out who was, that yeah. hornaday was driving yeah so we um i was building working on dirt track cars some then you know at my okay. house and okay stuff. And okay there's a couple funny stories i got to tell you about that so yeah yeah that, that's where I became. I was the biggest Earnhardt fan that ever was. He was okay. the greatest driver I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Absolutely, that was him. You know, yeah. that was what that was what started all this. So I remember I had my black Camaro that was painted number three, and we would race dirt tracks behind my house. We I built this little track. I, drinking whiskey's bad, but it's worse when your cousin has a D six high track uh, Caterpillar <laughs> dozer. Right. So we built this track, yeah. and we had a we had a two hundred and fifty dollar car rule. Yeah. That went to twelve hundred pretty oh. doggone quick. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. So needed we, some uh, upgrades, right? Yeah, just a tad because they were getting kind of fast around there, and it really wasn't safe. Because <laughs> Doug Tucker and I, yeah. my traveling partner, we broke down in Eden, in Indiana, not too far from you. Okay. And Seymour is actually Seymour. where it was. Yeah, yeah. The transmission came out of my uh, 
out of my Taurus station wagon that we okay. always used to travel in. Yeah. So Doug, this guy picks us up on the side of the road. He owns a record company. He picks us up, and Doug says, "Hey man, can we're trying to make it to a rodeo." Yeah. And he says, "Hey man, uh, do you uh, do you have anything for sale at your lot?" He said. I've got a 1978 Plymouth Valari station wagon I'll take $300 for. <laughs> Doug said, if it will run, you've yeah. sold it. Okay. We all jump in this Plymouth Valari oh and my. go rodeo. Okay. So I flew back, got my car, the whole deal. You know, once they got it fixed, I'm over there racing one day, and here comes Doug yeah. in yeah. that Valari station wagon. We <laughs> parked it over in a ditch and knocked the windows out of it and went to race in that Valari really? station wagon. On the dirt yeah. track. Okay. Yes. Okay. And Doug, and we were probably running – 50 or so you know oh well my. doug misses a turn oh it slides up the track and flips over on him we thought it was going to kill him yeah yeah so we uh we we kind of started making everybody put some roll cages <laughs> fire extinguishers oh really you went a little safer out. okay yeah a little bit okay. so anyway okay. you know that was my racing experience yeah yeah so now, so back to where we were with Mike and them, and I yeah. was telling them all about that, and they goes, you know how much more fun that is than what we're doing right now? <laughs> and, you know, we just were talking about that and stuff. Two weeks later, for some reason, I just ballsed up mm -hmm. and called him and said, hey, uh, Mike, this is Robbie Hodges, the rodeo clown. I met you, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he goes, I said, I was just wondering um, if you ever need like a, a coach driver or anything like that. I have okay. an A license okay. and I had never driven anything but a bucket truck Okay. In, a, <laughs> okay. in my life. Yeah. But and it had a 10,000 pound pole trailer on it. That's right. about, you can shorten it to eight feet long. You right, know, but right, it holds, right. So that's how I got my A license. Yeah, yeah. And he says, you know what? We just, we're replacing a truck driver right now. We just hired one, but we need a co-driver for yeah. everywhere. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm like, are you serious? And he goes, yeah, just, I tell you what, Daytona's coming up. This was later on, you know. Yeah. He said, Daytona's coming up. In July or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I said, uh, no, this was, I'm trying to get my dates correct because this was after that. Okay. Oh, I know what it was. Ah. He invited me to come and race. It's been 25 years. Ah. He invited me to come to some racetracks. So I go, you know, two or three times. I'm already yeah. on. Well, he calls me and says, we have another spot for you. If you'd like to do this, we are going to, we need somebody to go to Daytona. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And he says, yeah, you come down. Ronnie White's our new truck driver, but we need a co-driver and we need you. To, to, like I said, and this would be a good training spot. You'd be down there for eight days. Oh, I'm wow. going to Daytona, and I have never driven anything like this. Uh -huh. So I'll never forget this story. I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, what in the world am I going to do? I have just talked myself into a truck driving job here for NASCAR. I've <laughs> right. never driven a semi in my life. Really? And okay. Here's $2 okay. million dollars worth of equipment on right. this thing, you know, <laughs> right. and with truck and all. And I'm sitting there. And I remember that morning I got up. I'd met Ronnie that day before. We all went to lunch, and he went back home. So he, he said, we'll be ready to go about 6 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Well, I stayed up in top of the race shop. They had, a like, a lounge area and a little, you know, okay. gathering area up okay. there with a couch. Okay. And I woke up about 4.30 in the morning. I couldn't sleep because I couldn't believe this was fixing to happen. <laughs> so I go, <laughs> and I'm sitting on the gas tank of this semi at 5 o'clock in the morning waiting on Ronnie to get there. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I said, now, how do I ask him if I can just sit in the driver's seat of this thing? Because there is no way in hell that he's ever going to let me drive this semi. Right, right. So I'm practicing. I'm like, hey, Ronnie, do you think <laughs> if I pull this up while we're getting fuel, you know, maybe if I pull it up while you go into the bathroom or you go get a Coke out of the <laughs> Flying J, yeah. if I pull the truck up a little bit, because in my mind, Doug, yeah. if I drove that thing one 100 yards yeah. i was a nascar hauler driver didn't go. matter i didn't right. have to right you know i didn't have to say how many miles i'm going yeah so i'm like so ronnie if i can i back up just a little bit would you need me to back this truck up or anything <laughs> you know because yeah. it didn't matter if it's frontwards or backwards i was 100 yards yeah, i was right. a nascar i drove a hauler for nascar that's right because they're right. gonna fire me immediately you know <laughs> ronnie yeah. gets there and i just looked at him i said do you think there's any way between here and Daytona 
Yeah. I could drive just a little bit just to say I'm doing this. Yeah. He climbs up in that truck, looks at me, and zips that thing up and says, drive it, hell, I'll see you in Daytona. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> oh, my. He crawls back in the sleeper. In the sleeper, <laughs> zips it up, said, see you in Daytona. <laughs> Eight hours. So I get down there about Rock Hill on 26, and yeah. I'm going down through there, man. Yeah. I've got Leonard Skinner's. Yeah, uh, my favorite album of all uh, albums is CD. Then you know, yeah, yeah, and it was a, a 2003. Yeah, and I'm driving this sucker, man, and I'm thinking, whoa, this is I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I got scared of going about that time on the CB radio. You know, yeah, this guy comes on and he said, hey, how about you there, leaping lizard? Because that was a guy code. You know? And I said, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I was all proud. <laughs> he said, uh, he said, I, I work. I've been working this. I'm in this truck behind you here. And, I work for Bacon's truck line, you know, and we're a moving company. I got a lot of experience, 37 years over the road. How long, how long much experience you need to be driving one of them haulers? That's for my <laughs> next job. I said, well, hell buddy, I got about a hundred miles and about an hour and 45 minutes on this sucker. Oh, and wow. would you believe, yeah. and I did that for two years. They let me drive and, that. And hauler. You, you drove it that first run. You drove it all the way to Daytona. Drove it to Daytona the next week. Yeah. We actually touched both oceans in a week. Oh, my goodness. We went there, okay. and that was the California run. Me oh, and Ronnie okay. went out there. Yeah. yeah. And I learned more from that man. He is still one of my best friends and my heroes. We okay. still. In fact, the other night I was playing a show in my hometown. You know, I had my hometown gig last week. Yeah. Yep. Ronnie White drove six hours and showed up for that gig. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. My first, my first performance of the NFR, yeah. Jimmy Johnson had won his – First championship in 2010. Yep. Yep. He didn't go to the banquet. He came to my NFR. Is That's that what right? a friend he is. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So wow. anyway, so yeah. back to the bill race deal. So we go out there and about the third or fourth trip out to California, you know, remember me? I was like, <laughs> it was great. About three <laughs> or four, three or four races to California and about nine trips to Michigan. Yeah. I'm like, I cannot believe I'm doing this. What yeah. have I got myself? You know, yeah. Yeah. that was a great job. It was the coolest thing ever. And, you know, and I still have so many great friends with that. And, and some of the memories, the, I drove the, I was one of the first guys that ever drove. Well, probably the only one still that ever got up on the bank in my hauler. It was my last race I was going to work. Mm -hmm. And I was following, I followed Dave Radney everywhere I went. We called him Speed Racer. That was his CB handle. He was in the five with Kyle Busch. Oh, okay. When it was, when Kyle was Lowe's, this was before Jimmy Johnson. Oh, know? wow. Okay. Okay. So this was before there was a 48, or there yeah. may have been a 48, but you know, the Hendrix 48. Yeah. So he goes, hey, sunshine. <laughs> I believe I'm going to get her up one tire up on the bank. Yeah. I said, yeah. you go right ahead. So I see him gas settle. Then they had a, a freight shaker, freight liner. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's a good looking truck with that Lowe's all over it. Yeah. Yeah. I see him and he gasses it up right there. You know, cold trickle turn four right there. That's where you go <laughs> in it at. Yeah. Where the little shed is. Yeah. I, I see him gas it up. I see them black smoke roll out of them pipes. And yeah. he goes up and he puts one bank. He go, puts one, one set of wheels up on the bank. Yeah. Not me, Doug. Really? I went, you went on? Oh, wow. And, and let me tell you something. When I did, yeah. that thing got to leaning, oh. and it scared the hell out of me. Really? Luckily, I was doing about 60, Okay. and it stayed up on the bank. And when I got to the deal, all the hauler drivers, because they knew me I was an idiot rodeo clown anyway. <laughs> they thought it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> And when I parked that thing, I set the brake on it and got out, and I opened the door, and everything in there was turned over. I'll bet. It, it, and they all jumped in there to help me. They were laughing so hard. The tire racks, the only oh, thing that wow. really didn't. Yeah, it was so much. Uh, it was so much fun, just to watch them help me scrambling and laughing. Every spray bottle, everything we had, all the radios, everything was turned over in there. Yeah. And Mike and them never found out about. It. I can't believe oh, I'm wow. telling it now. He, oh, yeah. probably call me. Yeah. Yeah. Well. But we'll bring, another, we'll bring him on the show. The two of you we will bring him on the show. That would be awesome. I don't, be, yeah. Be, and Ronnie. And Ronnie. Heck yeah. yeah. But, um, that was a great experience. You know, I mean, it was just for, from a nobody to that. Yeah. You know? and, yeah, for sure. And, and knocking on your door in the middle of the night. Right. But, but, yeah, hey, clown. but, but you were also, you weren't just a hauler. You weren't just a transport driver, a hauler driver. When you got no. there, you had a job to do. What was right. your job and, through the weekend? Uh, okay, well, 
see, I would go home because I had the family oh. and everything. Oh, so okay. I would get there on Wednesday and pick the yeah. truck up, but I'd go a day early. And I actually, our first year, yeah. we had eight employees. Okay. Okay. We didn't have a 365, you know, two team, you know, mm-hmm. Hendrix Motorsports. Mm-hmm. We were at, we started, we were at Mike Wallace's, um, RV shop where, where he parked his buses. Okay. And to put four cars in there and one on the earth plate, what we call it, the zero bubble plate. Mm -hmm. And you had to put one on the rack so you could move around in there. That's how little this shop was. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. You know, when you go to Hendrix, it looks like a, a, you know, a Mm -hmm. showroom floor of a car dealership, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. not ours. Mm -hmm. So I was very uh, lucky in that, that I had to work. I had to do stuff, you know. I mean, they had me, you know, I learned I'd put rear ends in the car, do stuff, you know. Oh, wow. Okay. But, you know, I mean, I didn't do much setup. That was Ronnie's job. Yeah. He was so good at it. Yeah. And once they figured out how good Ronnie was, they put him in the airplane. You know, he was he was staying there till Thursday doing a, doing a fly gig. You know, he'd fly in on race day because he was at the shop working every day. Yeah. You know, and I had to leave on Thursday. Well, they needed him Thursday and Friday, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I got the truck, and then I was the main driver. Yeah. I wasn't the co-driver okay. anymore, so okay. I'd use my cousin. Okay. And and that's how we, you know, that's how I became the actual hauler driver and responsible for the whole rig. But, you know, following Dave Radney around with Kyle Bush helped me a lot. Ronnie yeah. told me to do that, listening yeah. to Ronnie. Yeah. And, you know, and, and they were so helpful because they knew I was just a stupid clown with a fun hobby. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and and didn't you crew? I mean, weren't you on yeah, pit road I, crewing? I, yeah, I was. I was uh, the first. At first, I would. Uh, I was catching gas, and then I was. Um, and then, well, I was tire catcher first, and I went to gas. Yeah. And Bobby Meese was our heavy metal, sheet metal guy, and our gas gas guy. Okay. And then I I caught gas, went over the windshield, get the hair offs and stuff, you know, because these yeah. guys are really experienced. You know, I never ran a gun or anything. I was going to jack a car one day. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget it. We were at the shop there. We'd moved over by then. The next year, we'd gotten some money, so we move over to Derek Cope's old shop in the in the uh, industrial park. Okay, Doug, you would have loved Thursdays there because <laughs> a lot of the, there was about fifteen or twenty um, truck shops in there. You know, yeah, yeah, craftsman truck shops. Well, a lot of these cars they were building them. Well, they had, they didn't have anywhere they could shake them down. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so. What they would, when I say shake them down, you go in there, you heat the brakes up, you know, mm-hmm. you make sure the nuts and bolts are all on it. Mm-hmm. So that that industrial part was a big circle. Okay. About a mile. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And they'd get them so, up to speed? No, 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 no. no, no, no. But they would get them up to 70 or 80 miles oh, an hour on that long straightaway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they'd be like, you'd hear one. <laughs> Yeah. Hear that kind of You'd hear that old, you know, they'd be coming by and they'd be like setting them brakes off, yeah, you know. Yeah. And about the next time they'd come by, they were a little they were a little more up to speed, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, it was so fun to watch yeah. them. You know, they would always stay and they would always let the car chief do that okay. instead of the crew chief. Okay. I think that was sort of his reward for putting up with the crew chief, you yeah, know. Yeah. So they would always let them guys they would always they, that was their coolest deal. So they'd get out there, and they'd get to run them cars by, you know. And I remember we were right across the street from uh, Travis Quapple and um, in that TRX car, mm-hmm. uh, our truck. And I'd watch him out there, and he'd have his arms folded out. He said, don't you bid in this race car, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, right, right. So the first time I ever jacked a car, uh, we, we got a car. We got a practice pit car. It was a Lumina. Oh, okay. I mean, it yeah, looks yeah. straight out of – of like days of thunder you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and back to back, back to i can't believe i'm getting to do cool stuff like this yeah they said i, I said i'm gonna try to jack a car we need a jack man i said i can do this yeah. they're like yeah right okay i'm 160 <laughs> pounds right i went over to jack that car and when i did i was hanging off the bar yeah because you know they're they're one pump brun hosel jacks is right what they are right you know? right and uh so you didn't jack this enough. car no, I could not force myself down, you know, to get it down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so they they let me drive the pit. They let me drive the pit oh, car. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So so here I go. I go around the circle and uh-huh. come back. Yeah. They're talking to me on the radio. 
and I slid in there and I look over there on the dash of this car. We got this car from, uh, oh, uh, let's see, who would that have been? Matt Kenza. Okay. It had yeah. a 17 on it. Yeah. There is a, like a tag on it inside the car, right where the, where the glove compartment would be, you know, on the, right there on the dashboard. Yeah. You know what it said? What? Dale Earnhardt Racing. Really? Okay. It was one of his old Bush cars. Wow. Wow. Okay. And, and Kansas like, had run it for a while. Had, had bought it. No, it wasn't even. It was just, it was more of a show car. Oh, you know, okay. It, it'd been cleaned okay. out. It just had a crate motor in it and, um, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, but it, it had the race seat in it. Mm. And I was sitting, I was sitting in freaking Dale Earnhardt's race car. Oh, and right then I was like, yeah. well, I don't know how I can outdo this. You, you know, this you've is made it. You have made this it was, at that point. I mean, to have, you know, but it was so long ago that it, it didn't say DEI. I mean, it, was, yeah, it said yeah, Dale yeah. Earnhardt Racing. Really? And I was like, okay. Golly! Uh, that is cool. And they dropped that jack and about broke my back because it didn't have good, you know, suspension. Race cars are just, you know, they're, <laughs> right. they're not right. comfortable. Right. So, and then uh, I did that for a while. That day, I remember doing that. We, like I said, we were pit. We pit our own cars. We didn't have a pit team. Right. We didn't have anything. Right. I mean, so you know. so didn't you? Didn't you clean the windows for Mike Wallace at day? I did. Uh, there was at some Daytona. Story. Yeah, we we finished fourth that year at Daytona. Oh wow, and that's at, big. At the coolers at the Coolers three hundred. Yeah, you bet. Now let me tell you something. Yeah, Mike, Mike and Dale Junior were really good friends. Yeah, and Mike and. You know, because uh, everybody loved Herman and they loved Mike and Rusty and Dale were very best friends. Mm -hmm. And when he lost Dale, mm -hmm. Rusty lost his best friend and he okay. never found another okay. one, you know. Okay. So, but Mike could draft so, so good. And yeah. we had an old Pontiac body on the car that was, you were allowed to use a car three years after they quit making it. Okay. Okay. So we had a Pontiac that I'm telling you what. That thing was a bullet. And mm -hmm. then we went to a Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. The year that we went to Chevrolet, we had a big, heavy steam motor in that sucker. I mean, it would go. And we get down there to, to Daytona, and they said it was really greasy that day, I remember. And Mike says, Mike says, hey, get somebody over the wall. NASCAR is going to allow an extra man over the wall. Yeah. Hey, Robbie. And, and Tony Lambert was our crew chief. And he said, Robbie, come here. And I'm, you know, because I've got my headphones on. Mm -hmm. He says, come mm -hmm. here a minute. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So that's the first time I ever went over the wall. Oh, wow. And he, okay. And he, and I'm at Daytona. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going over the wall. <laughs> so he says, <laughs> yeah. He says, grab number one and pull it. Okay. 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 And then, because they're stacked, there's one. He so said, the number film's one will on be. The, on the windshield. Yeah. The, the tear offs. Oh, the tear offs. You bet. Grab number one, tear off and pull it. So I reach up there to pull it. And 11 of them came off. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, I mean, we were way into the race, like 13 laps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, so, so you basically <laughs> used up all the tear-offs. Immediately. Immediately. And like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it with 11 laps in or something. Yeah. yeah. So, I'll never forget it. We, we finished fourth, Mike. Somehow, yeah. every time we'd stop, you know, we'd squeeze the windshield off, you know, get it cleaned up enough. Yeah. And that last run, somebody oiled up. You know, yeah. And, okay. Uh, okay. And they and Mike comes over here and he sticks my head in that window and he goes, <laughs> "I want you to look what I just had to drive through." Yeah. And I said, "Well, maybe if I wouldn't have screwed that up. We might have won, you know." But what? <laughs> but he uh, he said, "I don't care, Rob. You know, look at this thing." I said, "Let me take this thing a lap and I'll show you <laughs> that I could still no." <laughs> Hell, I couldn't. Mike's so tall, I couldn't even reach the pedals in yeah. that thing. Yeah. But uh. He uh, he did, but that was quite the memory. Oh, that was man. such a oh, such a great memory, man. You bet. Just to you bet to, those guys the way they treated me. And I, like I said, I'm still friends with them. I talked to Alan Bestwick a lot. Oh really? Alan took okay. a little. Yeah, Alan's a good friend of mine. He is. Um, he's actually he took a little stint with PBR last he year. He did. He did. I really enjoyed him behind yeah, the shoes. I, I did, did too. And and then he and then he he got a. I'm sure he got a better offer with like SRX with Tony Stewart okay. and everybody. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's he's that guy. I mean, I watched him the other day, and I enjoy it so much. You know, NASCAR's changed so much now, mm -hmm. and that it's it. You know, people are like, oh, I bet you watch it every week. No, them. I said I don't know anybody, and I don't know the drivers. Really, you don't follow you know? it anymore. And I and I don't. You know okay. why? Because right. they just use one lug nut. Yeah, that's and true. To me, that's it's true. not NASCAR anymore. Yeah, it's it's not. It's it's almost like 
GTX or mm-hmm. something, you know, mm-hmm. your car, your Toyota. I looked at one the other day yeah. and, uh, I was driving down the road and I saw a little Supra. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I got to looking at those cars like that you have, you yeah. know, your, your yeah. little, and, uh, it looks more like a cup car than these things do. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. new ones, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm a fan of it. And I love yeah. Daytona and Talladega yeah. and Bristol, yeah. but my all time favorite track is Darlington. Okay. Um, okay. By far, not because of the truck incident, but it's just such a racer's racetrack because okay. I mean, the sand eats that track away. You could literally Doug scuff in a set of stickers, sticker yeah. tires. Yeah. Pushing it around the garage. Okay. Now, there's that much sand on the on the ground. Oh, it just eats it up. They lose a second a lap in four laps. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So tire management and, and have enough balls to put it against the wall up there, you know, is you what bet. wins that race. You bet. But, you know, and, but that was, I learned so much. Yeah. And, and, I, and the and year. So bring it forward. Um, other than going, we're going to talk go kart racing in Michigan here in a little bit. But, oh but, gosh! But you, what, what of that NASCAR experience? And I mean, right. knocking on your door, going with somebody you never met before, you knew of them. How did that? Right. How did that? Well, this is this this uh, episode's about uh, your formative years. So right. how did that inform? How did the road? I'm sorry, the NASCAR experience. How'd that help with the clowning? Well, um, I, I'll have to say, and I'll use this twice in this okay. whole segment okay. we're using. <laughs> Doug, you know me. I've always, my hobbies are how I get away from rodeoing, you know, because okay. I'm so busy with the rodeos. Yeah, yeah. I've always admired people that did things like actors Mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. had another job mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that uh, or another hobby also you know like um well marty robbins race cars absolutely you know absolutely um uh, marty did yeah. and then you know billy bob thornton has a band okay yes yes you yes. know yes. and and i it I, I guess that's been my helpful spot in, in rodeo and is they've always thought that you know that hodges does some cool stuff you bet. because of rodeo I've gotten to do all this stuff, you, you know. Bet. You bet. The connections. I mean, it is, okay. Absolutely, the connections and the people who are fans of that. You know, so many race car drivers are rodeo fans. I remember doing a deal one time at Tom Teague's place up there in um, in, in North Carolina, and uh, Tony Stewart and Ryan Newman came to the rodeo. Oh wow! And, okay. And, and Ronnie Ronnie went up there with me. He rode up there with me to do that bull ride, and that's the first time I ever met Luke Kaufman. Okay. And uh, we were up at we were up there doing this bull riding at Tom Teague's place, and I look over there, and I'm making fun of this really, really, really beautiful lady. Not making fun, just, mm-hmm. hey, how you doing? Yeah. And I look over at the guy, and it's Tony Stewart. <laughs> and I said, I'm so sorry, <laughs> honey. Why wouldn't I think you'd have a hot girlfriend, right, you know? Right, but right. Anyway, and I didn't even notice him there. And I look, and Ryan Newman and Chrissy are sitting right beside him. Okay, you know, and I'm like, whoa. Okay. And they were laughing. Of course, here they come out to the trailer because Ronnie White knew him, you know. <laughs> right. They didn't take me golf cart. Thank no, goodness, no. there I'd have been again. I was out by then, because once I got my pro card, yeah, you know, in, in the rodeo world, I had to kind of slow that down because a lot of it I was being gone so much, you know, yeah. and and that was that was a pretty good success deal, you know, five years of clowning and then get my pro card, you know. Yeah. So let's so let's back this up a little bit. You you're okay. in you're at the IFR. You work you work two thousand two. You work two thousand four. Um, right. IPRA Clown of the Year in four, five, and six. So going hard. You're working at that point. You're working with us up in the Northeast. Oh yeah, that, okay. was, that was the greatest times of my life. Absolutely. Up there. You remember some of the stuff we did up there? And, yeah. And. Yeah. Oh, it was so, so much fun. And I say it's our formative years because around that time, Sam got North Washington for the first time. Oh, boy. Okay. Yes. IPRA Rodeo. You come up and you work it. That's the first time I'd work that rodeo, right? And it's all week long. Oh, yeah. And I can Mine, rem- too. It was actually my first time. Absolutely. We were just trying stuff out. I can remember standing in the middle of the arena, you know, something's going on. Uh, I'm, it doesn't yeah. involve the, either of us. And I'm like, what'd you think of this? That was good what you did there. What'd you think about that? Yeah, it was. I was new. You yeah. You bet. You bet. You know, you were always, I, I almost 
And I was telling Laura a few minutes ago mm-hmm. when I talked, you know, before mm-hmm. you got on here, yeah. your beautiful wife. And yeah. I said, she said, I listened to y'all's first podcast. Yeah. And she said, you and Doug got along so good. And, and I said, you know what was so cool about Doug with uh, you? I get to brag on you a minute. <laughs> like we talk yeah. is how we did the rodeo. It is. Absolutely. It was so different. Instead of, hello, everybody. How yeah. are you yeah. on a Thursday afternoon? We're bringing you the rodeo. You and I always had conversations. <laughs> we and we could have been sitting at Hooters. Yeah. Yeah. With at the bar. Yeah. Wherever. Yeah. And it was the same conversation when we rodeoed. It was so damn comfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was yep. just this and I think that was why you and I had so many good years together is because mm-hmm. we would you and I would get into a conversation, and if the five thousand people sitting around us wanted to join in, <laughs> yeah. They were welcome, but yeah. it was we would have so much fun. Absolutely, it was fun. You know, and, yeah. and when you and the way you announced fit me so well because you were such a straight, straight lay straight, and then I'm the <laughs> idiot. You know, right. Dean Martin. I was and, Jerry Lewis. There you go. Yes. There you go. Absolutely. I was Jerry Lewis. Yeah, and and um, you. You brought me, man. You yeah. you brought it, and I wanted. I'd smile, you know. Not every rodeo you smile at anymore. Yeah, I yeah. wish you did, you yeah, know. Yeah. But man, when when it was me and you, golly, we had so much fun. Some of the it stupid was. stuff, and I wasn't scared. Mm-hmm. And here's another deal. Yeah, I was never scared to try something new in a rodeo arena with mm-hmm. you because because mm-hmm. some of them didn't work. But you never. You know what I mean? You always covered it, Wes. So you were always comfortable yeah. to, to do a new act or to try something, you know, yeah. just a new joke or a new act. We did some stupid stuff, but it worked, and it was so much fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would just get to babbling because it was comfortable. You bet. I don't I, – I haven't been able to replace that. Well, that – All the all the champs. And now there's great, great, great rodeo yeah, announcers out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, You know, and, and each one of us have a great story, but I never was just able to capture you bet. that again. You bet. You know, you bet. What, what you and I did for like six years. Yeah, yeah. And, and – From the mm-hmm. – well, I was just going to say yes, um, and it was all new. I mean, we were trying stuff out. I'm learning how yes. to do it. You're helping me. It it just it just was a great a great combination at the right place at the right time, and it was fun. Yeah, you know. And then later on, you know, later on after I got divorced and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and I was traveling all the time, mm-hmm. and <laughs> I might or might not have brought a girlfriend around. Mm-hmm. And uh, you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, this girl yeah, is, yeah. what was it? What was it? This girl, I said, my oh, gosh, oh, she's no, dumb. No, well, now wait. Or whatever it was. And, Doug, well, you tell it because I've had 17 well, concussions well, since well, then. Well, we're golfing, right? Beautiful okay. young lady. Beautiful yes. young lady. Um, right? Yeah, she was a, yeah, she was, yeah. And 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 very young. <laughs> right. Way too young. I'm well, 41. I, I don't well, she know. She was 24. I don't know the age difference, but the she young may lady. or may not have worked at the Lufkin Ballet. Well, right, <laughs> right. I knew she was she was a dancer. I knew that, right? Yes. And and waltzes so ballet. or she ballet. Was, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and we're at the golf course. We can't mention her name. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, don't do okay. that. We're we're okay. um we're golfing. You, Sam, and I. We're go- we're in Benton, Pennsylvania. We're golfing. Right. And, right. you know, we're probably on the eighth hole, ninth hole. And you you start to complain about her. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, yep. and wait she a had very, very shorty shorts on. Too, and I'm remember? like, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me get this straight. You're complaining about this beautiful <laughs> young lady. And then she wants to even hang out with you. I know. <laughs> I'm like, God, I'm so tired of her. I'm ready. <laughs> and if you she has to get out of the truck and pee, I'm going to leave. Yeah. You were, you, yeah, you had grown impatient for whatever reason. I don't know. Yes. You know, I wasn't okay. there the whole time, right? Uh, I got you. But you looked at me and you said, Doug, she, you said, she's a lot like a Corvette. And I'm like, what? And you're like, yeah, she's like a Corvette. She's fun on the yeah. weekends, but you wouldn't dri- want to drive her every day. 
<laughs> no, exactly. It, what, am I am I am I misstating the, the, what you said? It was very close. I said it's like renting a Corvette in Vegas. It's fun <laughs> for the weekend, but you want to take it back to Enterprise. <laughs> I think Sorry. your story has modified and morphed since you yeah, told it last. Probably. Well, yeah. <laughs> but of course, course it did. Aren't we of always course. working on yep. material? <laughs> yes. And uh, <laughs> we yep. can edit all this out she if did. you'd like. I, no, I'm a techno man. That's part of me. Okay. You know, yeah. now, you know, now I have a beautiful lady from California and, uh, Krista. She's been the love of my life. 13 years we've been together, long Absolutely. distance. And I saw pictures, she, right? I just yep, saw pictures. Yep. So you were she's together. She's actually here now. She is with you. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wonderful. Perfect. Perfect. She, she showed up. Oh, I was going to tell you, and I yeah. never got to finish yeah. this, but I was going to tell you, I, I cared her. Everybody loves Krista. She's so much fun. She's a reason. Her and Bullet are the two reasons that mm-hmm. I had got rodeos. You know, yep. I'm not going to yep. lie for the last 13 yep. years. Yep. So she went with me to my uh, reunion last week, my class reunion, oh, 37th okay. year. Oh, wow. Yeah. 37? And, yep. Good. Yep. Golly. And it was so cool to have that arm candy with me. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just from Look my at past me, boys. everything. Now, these were, this was cool. And all the, you know, everybody's fine now. You know, and it yeah. was, this was a better school where I was at, but it was so neat to go do it. And I played my hometown show last week and they, and she came with us. You, you got to have a good woman. Look at you. Laura's been putting up with you now for how many years? Uh, we were uh, in June. It was 40. Been married for 40 years. Good Lord, Doug. It's longer than I've been out of high school. <laughs> it is. The clock is ticking. I've almost been married longer than I haven't been at this point. Oh, you know, you're right. You, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, we'll work on so this true. material. This is how material gets built, right? This is exactly. The, yeah, I'm yeah. going to use that. <laughs> you okay. I've almost been as married as long as I haven't been married. That's there, good. There you go. So, so back to back to Benton, right? I oh, remember. Yeah. I remember the one year you're working it, and son of a gun, if you weren't taken off, you was headed to Cheyenne. Yeah, right yes, we that. were. Okay. We go to Cheyenne. Yep, we yeah. drive across there, and, and Bobby Cox was with me. Remember okay. little Bobby? He was yeah. bronc riding. He wanted to ride. He said he'd never seen it. I said, if you'll help. Bobby Collins. Collins, Collins. Bobby Cox, he's the coach of the Braves. I don't think he was with us. <laughs> no, <there>. no. Okay. <laughs> but Bobby Collins yeah. jumps in and goes with us to Cheyenne. Okay. And that was the first time I'd ever been there. Yeah. What yeah. a what a great place. So, if anybody ever gets a chance, that's a wonderful rodeo. So set us up, and that would have been what, 2010? No, no, before that. Seven, eight, it, something? Nine. 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 2008 or nine. I was divorced, so it's 2008 or nine. Yeah. Okay, so what set that up? How did? You, how do you, first off, do you get a call from Cheyenne and says, hey, Robbie, we want you? How does that no, go? No, no, no. I wasn't I wasn't fortunate enough to get to work the rodeo. Oh, you did Sosby was. This oh, was Cody Sosby's was first year. Okay. It was Sosby's first year. Okay. Okay. So you went so, out to support him? Yes. Okay. And I went out there to see him and show that uh, girlfriend, the ballet dancer, off. Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we went out there. We drove out there to that. And that what an experience. Yeah. And yeah. right then, I decided I wanted to stay in the pros. I so mean, I, I you knew you was yeah, headed that just, way. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, I mean, that was incredible to see. I mean, yeah. it, So it your PRCA, poor. you mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I never said I moved up. Right, right. From the IPRA, I just yeah. moved over. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I still can I do IRA rodeos. My brown plaques are right next to my red plaques. You bet. You know, you bet. I'm just as proud. Of those plaques as I am anything, you know, the IRA is what set me to where I was. That's how yeah. I learned to rodeo, you know, and what a great, you know, and then that was our years too, you know. You bet, you bet, you, you know, bet. And had no idea where it was heading. The only reason I ever really got my PRCA card to begin with yeah, was because I lived in Georgia and there was about 15 Florida rodeos oh. then, and you could actually – go down there and make a good living you know i mean because yeah. nobody else lived near there i was the closest guy to it okay i was in 2005 and troy weekly uh gave me my five rodeos so i could get my card got your card so then when did you say i'm going i'm going west i'm going prca what year was that and and how did that um, all even come about how did they find well, you 2006 um i remember when i got approved for my card was it 
at Daytona, at, uh, down at Daytona Beach at the mm -hmm. uh, Aramark Center down there. We were doing a, a cowboy tour. Mm -hmm. And I put in for my card in 2005, and 2006 was my first official year, and I was nominated for Clown of the Year. Right. And uh, right. I was, because it was new, fresh, I had Elvis going, you know, and, okay. and just, and doing, and it was so was so fast. Everything went now, so fast. Now, wait a minute. Fast. You were nominated in 2006 for the PRCA Clown of the Year? Yes. Wow. I was not. Yep. My Your first, first year. year. Your first year. Yep. Holy yep. Me and Sosby both were. Yeah. So the clown just, I'm sorry, the clown, the phone just rang and said, we want you come out here? Yeah. And then I go to, I go to my first year, I remember in 2005, sitting in that booth and watching these committees walk by. And yeah. it was like. How you doing? I'd like to talk to you. We have Flint Rasmussen. Ah, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> right, right. Well, the next year, you know, the phone started ringing. Okay. And, you know, and again, it was kind of a lull year. And I, uh, the next thing I knew, I've got 30 of them, you know. Oh, wow. And, uh, wow. And, and got on the, well, a lot of my barrel packing work helped too because I've, you know, there was nobody working the barrel then. Nobody. I was the only guy working the barrel. Okay. And and um, you know, hard as I did because I grew up in Okeechobee, Florida, where you had to work the barrel, or somebody would die. You okay. Know? So for our listeners, talk a little bit about working the barrel. What what in what do you? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. You see, um, you see, there's always two or three bullfighters. Mm -hmm. And then there's always a guy in the barrel that's really supposed to back up the bull riders. I mean, okay. the bullfighters, you know, they take care of the bull riders. Bullfighters take care of bull riders. Mm -hmm. The barrel man is supposed to take care of your bullfighters, you know, because when they get knocked down, there's nobody to come get them. Right, right. So in the first rodeo, Ben Lee and Kevin Ellis, we were down there in Florida, and he says, it's time for you to become a barrel man here. Okay, okay. And I'm like, oh, wow. I got so just because you're a rodeo clown doesn't mean you're a barrel man. Absolutely. You oh, know, it, wow. it was a, you know, so I was the first guy to kind of get that started back. Okay. And, okay. and, uh, <laughs> Kevin and Ben said, Robbie, we need you to stay right here, get them handles. And when we need you, you come get us out. Cause they, you know, that's the meanest pin of bulls in America is the Okeechobee swamp bramers. You know, every one of them, they're looking to kill something mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, there's one guy down there at Okeechobee. He has a, what they call a, a horseshoe muscle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh, it was, it okay. would jump up like a pop knot because he, all he did was swing a two pound hammer mm -hmm. during the rodeo and put boards back up. Oh, wow. Cause, cause the Bramers were knocking them down, being hard. Oh, they just the beat them to death. Yeah. They only yeah. seen people twice a year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, these things are hot and mad. So the first, the first perf, I uh, the first perf, I walked out there in the arena, and I see this big high horn thing coming at me about a hundred miles an hour, and I ducked, mm -hmm. and when I ducked, he hit me, and I thought I was dead, and it didn't hurt in the barrel, in the barrel, yeah, 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 and I made a save, and I was part of the bullfighting oh, then, wow. and let wow. me tell you something, yeah. I was hooked okay absolutely hooked i lived it everything i wanted to do i wanted to work the barrel at every bullfight i wanted you know really and yeah okay. and you know and i that was that was my difference okay i try to tell these young kids coming in here yeah you have to have a different thing you have mm -hmm. to have something different mm -hmm come in you can't be like everybody else you know it kills me some of these kids say hey robbie i want to get my card i said okay um what have you got you know yeah what do we do? oh well i've got a car act yeah okay okay you know yeah what else you know because you, you i guess that's how i did it yeah. I, I came up as elvis you know nobody mm -hmm. had done an elvis partially cooking show act right and right. sang it right right so you know <laughs> I remember. so it was yeah. something and 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 that's how I got hired. They wanted the, the committees were wanting something a little bit different, a little faster, mm -hmm. you know, a little harder mm -hmm. and, and not saying that them guys weren't great. Those are our forefathers of this sport. Right. Rudy Burns, Liesel, you, bet. you know, you JG, bet. Ted Kimsey, you bet, you know, and, and to me, once I learned to work that barrel, mm -hmm. <clears throat> once I, once I learned how to work that barrel, 
I felt like it was a disservice to all those veterans that that did that quail Dobbs and them guys mm-hmm. that worked the barrel at those mm-hmm. bullfights and everything. Okay. I felt like it was a disservice to not work the barrel to them. Yeah, you know, it had yeah. be, it, it, they had forgotten about them. You bet. You know, and and now the biggest thrill in this game, more than the NFRs, the plaques, the buckles, is those older guys treat mm. me like one of them. Okay. You know. Okay. Very cool. I'm Very in a, cool. At, at the risk of sounding arrogant, I'm in their conversations. Isn't and, that neat? Yeah. Yep. You know, I mean, that's to me, that's like. Jimi Hendrix said, man, you should see that Robbie Hodges play guitar. Yeah. He would never do that. Or right. Dale yeah. Earnhardt, you know, or somebody said, man, you should see him wheel that race car. Yeah. Yeah. Y- you know, that's and, cool. yeah. and, and to me, that's the highest honor in this game that is, is, so is, cool. is being respected a little bit by your ancestors. You, you know, bet. you're yeah. the, 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 the first guys, Chin one. You bet. You bet. And you're still working the barrel as hard as you ever did, Robbie? Yeah, I retired. Actually, I retired from where I'm at now. I'm sitting out here at the rodeo, fixing to do a rodeo tonight. I'm in Pasadena, Texas. It's a nine-perf rodeo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been out here for a week already. Yeah. And um, I work the I work protection, but they have a bullfight here on Saturday night. Okay. And I used to be the bullfight barrel man. I was me okay. and Andy North were the were the go to guys, you know. Okay. After the other guys had retired. And I was fifty three years old and I was beat up so bad, you know. Yeah, yeah. In there because these kids, you know, it wasn't going the direction of, you know, it used to be barrel work it used to be an art for a bullfight. Well, now it's like shunned because you had guys, in my opinion, telling the bullfighters how to do this that never laced up a set of cleats. I see. I see. Okay. You know, say, like, if you go that barrel, that's a crutch. You know, well, yeah. the first thing to do, if barrel gets knocked over, they're scared to go stand it up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, next thing you know, you're getting blasted by, you know, a, a Volkswagen running over you. Yeah. 30 miles an hour, you know, and hitting you. And it, all these concussions came from that, oh, wow. you know. And oh, So, really, you've been concussed. I mean, you, you joke 17 times. That's, no, that yeah, I joke about it, but that's about how many we're at. Really? Really? Knocked yeah. out cold on occasion? Yeah, well, sure chilled. Sure chilled. Okay. You know, okay. You know, and, and, and here was the worst one I ever had. My, I was, had a bull flip me. Well, there's been twice that were really bad. Uh, if you look at the Coors Can Barrel Man video, the one at Kissimmee, mm-hmm. bull hit me and he flipped over and he stuck his head in the barrel and head butted me. Oh. And the other one, I, I hit this uh, cement wall over here with my head oh. and it just shoved me out of the barrel. Oh. But um, it it was taking a toll on me. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you why I quit, Doug. Yeah. To be real honest with yeah. you, yeah, I was I was thinking, I was thinking before I was going. Okay. That guy'll probably be all right if I don't go. Yeah, yeah. And that was my biggest fear oh, is losing the reputation. I see. You was you was not wanting to get in as much as you used to get in. Exactly. I you see. Know, I see. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it wasn't that I didn't want to. I would just think I would still go, mm-hmm. but I was a half a second behind more than I wanted to be. Okay. And I, okay. I hope that makes sense. It but, does. It does. You know, I'm Absolutely. sitting there watching this kid and watching this kid get bumped around, you know, and I'd be standing beside him a year earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the you time bet. he hit the ground, I was catching him. You bet. And now I would be there, and I'd be going, let's see if he stands up before I go. Okay. And I did that about three or four times, and I looked at my best friend, Blue Jeans, and said, yeah. Blue, I'm, I'm slowing down. Okay. He said, no, you're making good decisions. I said, nah, it's just not. So I decided to retire, and I'm and I'm trying. I've got three or four guys under my wings now that I'm training on. Wayne Radley's doing great. Mm-hmm. Got him. Ty Stewart, he's an IPRA guy. He went to uh, he went to the finals a couple of years, and he actually both of them worked hard more the other day. And Doug, I was so proud of them. Isn't that neat? Okay. That, okay. You know, it's something that that I had kind of helped you know develop, and. I was so proud of my buddies. I put on a, a barrel school at a bullfight school for at John Roberts place in Tennessee. And I had 11 guys, 11 barrels. Mm-hmm. Three of them have went on to win, uh, the, the, the bullfight challenge at the IFR. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Two of them, two of them are still going hard and I mean, they're packing the barrel, you know, so it, it just, you know, if they could have ever given me a, an award, let's say, mm-hmm. Yeah. 
that that's the award is watching those kids okay you know okay. dig, dig them guys out of the fire and it's so cool that's and cool. you know what i want to be in this game yeah and you know sometimes we get a little too excited about our awards and our nfrs and stuff like that mm-hmm. and it tends to make you squ- squash a guy instead of helping a guy i see i see and i'll, I'll give you an example mm-hmm. rex dunn mm-hmm. you don't know how many rodeo you don't know how many big rodeos and NFRs Rex Dunn. You can't tell me right off the bat how many NFRs right. Rex Dunn had. Right. But you can damn you can damn sure know how many people he helped. Okay. Everybody. Okay. You know, and and that's that's what that's the legacy I want to leave here is the guy that they can call. Nothing thrills me more when them young kids uh Ryder Kisner, mm-hmm. great little barrel packer. Mm-hmm. Great. He's won comedy act of the year or actually I'm not comedy but dress act of the year, you know, two years in a row. And um, and and he'll call me about working that barrel, Robbie. What did I need to do here? Did you see this? Let me okay. send you this. Okay. Okay. And to me, that is the highest, absolute highest honor that you could ever have, Doug. You is bet. to you bet. You know, to to have those guys call you and ask you questions. I've got them all now where they're padding the rim top of that barrel. You know, where they're not getting their brains beat out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and stuff like that. And they listen. And and to me, if you listen to somebody that's older than you that you respect them did you, you did know? you have a mentor like that when you were coming up through the formative years did you have yes you know okay once yeah. i started working the barrel i did okay um uh, ted kimsey and oh. and rudy burns i never okay. got to know quail you know i wish i would have but ted kimsey and rudy burns were my two influencers and you know what they did huh. they encouraged me they didn't try to squash me because i was the new guy in fact the year the one of the, I was on the Coors Man in the Can thing with Rudy for three or four years, and then one year he wasn't on it, and I called him. I said, "I'm resigning." Yeah. My my position. Yeah. Because you deserve to be on that. And he says, "Dude, you know how he is." He yeah. says, "Dude, let me tell you something." Yeah. About every fifteen years in this game, there's a changing of the guard. Yeah. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Yeah. 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 All you can do is leave your legacy on how you were. And I try so hard to stress to these young guys that are, you know, complaining, sending videos. Oh, look at this guy. He's terrible, you know, and not helping. And these guys not answering the kids' phones when they call. Yeah. I said, the only legacy you're going to have after it was your turn. Yeah. The only legacy you're going to have, man, is those kids respect you enough to call you and ask you questions because they know you'll shoot them straight. Yeah. They'll know you're for everybody, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to be such what well, I am. I'm, I'm a fan of my friends. You bet. You bet. And, and, and you, so what you're referring to is, is when they don't help you, if there's that competitiveness. If, if I help you, you're going to go take my work. Is that what you're referring to when you say yeah, they're, they're trying so to scared of getting you? knocked off yeah. the top? Yeah. 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 You know, and I was so lucky to have Rudy and 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 Ted and them guys. Yeah. Ted's a little harder on me than Rudy, you know. Yeah. But but Ted Ted had it in his own way, and now we are the best friends. I went and took him the other day and surprised his for his uh, 70th birthday party. Oh wow, wow, wonderful! I I, I I took him to the surprise party. I stopped by there, and he just sat over there and cried. He says, "Man, nobody comes by." You know, I said, yeah. "Hey, dude, you're my hero. Yeah, yeah, are you I kidding me? You know, you so are my cool. hero." Round six of my NFR, um, they did a thing with um, – it was uh, it was Ted and um, – oh, what's the he, – he, he, he got killed. He was a, he's a great bullfighter, and uh, they did a thing with it. And I have a picture in my um, – okay. I have a picture in my camper here of my barrel sitting in the tunnel at the NFR. Mm-hmm. Greg Rumor. Greg Rumor. So oh, okay. Okay. And they did a bullfighting from the old Wrangler throwback deal, and they, and Greg fought a bull, and Ted worked the barrel during my NFR. Oh wow! As a, as an opening, and my barrel is sitting right next to Ted Kimsey's barrel. Oh wow! Okay. And it is amazing, and that is a blown up. Krista actually got it canvassed for me. Okay. Okay. Can you, know, you and can you uh, can we use that uh, picture for the cover of this episode? <laughs> 
Would that be possible? I would love that. Would I will absolutely send you yeah, that picture. How that. about that? You bet. I would love that. Yeah. That that wraps this all up with a bow. You know what I mean? And and yeah. I really yeah. I hear a lot about how people are doing it, how they're getting out there and so forth. I don't hear often um how they're helping each other. You know, how how they're mentoring the younger folks. So I really appreciate this, Robbie. You know, Doug, I wish I could say, Oh bullshit, Doug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, that's not true. It, yeah. it, unfortunately, that's the way it is. And all I want to leave in this legacy, you know, I was the – because when I when I got the NFR, yeah. and I know we didn't really get to talk a lot about that, but yeah. the, when I got that call to do the NFR, I was the – I don't know. I don't want to say youngest because I wasn't the youngest, but the earliest in my career. In, yeah, but for time in the PRCA. Five years, Doug, Five years. I had the NFR. You, bet. you know, you bet. so there was a lot of people mm-hmm. that kind of felt like I stepped around them. Okay. It wasn't my okay. fault. Hell, I don't get to vote. <laughs> right. right. Oh, that's and, so and it cool. almost went back to, ch- to to episode one a little yeah. bit, yeah, you know, and I yeah. felt like the bullying. bullying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it wasn't because I was the NFR barrel man, and yeah. I really didn't give a crap. But, yeah, yeah. you know, and I had a lot of guys come over. Now, Robbie, what you should have done was, and what you ought to done here. And I'm like, uh, and about the fifth turf, I finally got fed out. I said, you talking about the barrel that's out there in the NFR yeah, arena right yeah, now that y'all yeah. are sending the stands? When you get it, you do it how you want to do it, yeah, you know? Right. That's right. That's but, right. you know, and, and I, I just, I don't want to ever be known as the NFR barrel man. I want to be known as the NFR barrel man that helped these young kids you and kept it going, you, you know, because like I said, one day they're going to have to look over there in me in old mm-hmm. pine box mm-hmm. and they're going to say, you know, that guy, I don't know how many NFRs he had. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? He yeah. had one, whatever. Yeah. yeah but he helped everybody. Absolutely. Helped everybody. And I think that yeah. may, yeah, I like that. I like that. You um, know, it, mm. that was the greatest experience in the world, but the, a better or equal experience is, like I said, these young kids, you know, mm-hmm. coming up and mm-hmm. or when you walk in into an arena and they say, oh, my God, this pen of bulls mean. Thank you for being here. Thank mm-hmm. you so much, because mm-hmm. I still work. You know, I love working the barrel. I love making picks with my barrel, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. and being known as Coors Can Barrel Man, you know, and, yeah. and the bad clown, you know, <laughs> right. and that's what they call me, yeah. the bad clown. Yeah. Funny story how that got, but we'll do that in the next episode. In the next but. episode, and we are going to do another episode, okay? Uh, you, think that, you don't think they'll be tired of us for oh the Oh, my day? goodness, no. And, you know, I got a request, <laughs> Mike. Uh, Michelle Swearingen, Mikey Swearingen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She asked if you'd talk a little bit, to close this out here today, she'd asked if you'd talk a little bit about Bullet. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, um... It was, uh, I had Bullet. I had a crazy girlfriend. I wrote a song about her. Mm-hmm. Mean one. Well, I had just gotten divorced and I was dating this girl. I moved to Wisconsin mm-hmm. for a little while, got out of there and came back home. Well, I'd left, Lynn and I left on pretty good terms as far as you could for the situation. Mm-hmm. And we were still. We've always been cordial. Now we're friends. I mean, I live down there half the time. So, you know, I had three kids, mm-hmm. and they're living there by themselves in this in, at this farm. So I left my bulldog, mm-hmm. Gator. Gator. Okay. And, yeah. And Gator got run over and killed oh. in the road, uh, oh. you know, a year or so later. And so my girlfriend brings me this dog home. Mm-hmm. And... That dog, without a doubt, became the most legendary dog in rodeo. Where I'm sitting right now, I'm sitting here looking at a hospitality tent here at the rodeo Mm -hmm. in Pasadena, Texas. And you know what it's called? What? The Bullet Hodges Memorial Hospitality Tent. Really? Really? Because when he would get to this rodeo. Yeah. I've had this rodeo for 13 years. So when from the time he was a pup. Yeah. Up till last year when I didn't have him, um, he would get out, and I wouldn't see him for three or four days, and he'd lay over here at this cook shack, and they would just throw him meat, 
<laughs> he had it figured and out. Every once, yeah, it was like, do you remember when your little kids were at the pool and you and Laura were sitting there having a drink, sitting there like, hey, Daddy, hey, Mama, we're okay. We're going back to the pool. You right, know what I mean? Right, right, right. This was Bullet, and every once in a while he'd walk by, and, and he wouldn't even slow down <laughs> going to the – and he would right. go hang out at the poultry barn, or he'd go over there to the lamb barn and hang out. Yeah. And he would – He'd walk by and he'd just look at me, kind of wink. I'd say, "We're good. I'm just letting you know I'm all right, Dad. I'm gonna go again." <laughs> yeah. And I would not. That dog would not sleep in this trailer for eight days straight. Really? Okay. They used to kidnap that dog. All the rodeo guys. Okay. They would, they would say, "We're taking Bullet to Canby, Oregon, with us. We'll be back in four days." <laughs> okay. And, and he did. would have a beer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Wade, Wild Wade Sundale. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him yeah. and Ty Atchison and when uh, Wes Stevenson, the Wolfpack, was living with me on the road the year after I had the finals. Yeah. I had my pick of rodeo, so I went to the Northwest. Yeah. They would literally take him, and I'd see him, and Bullet would have an ice cream in one <laughs> paw and a beer in the other, <laughs> and I would not see him for literally three or four days. Yeah. And I'd get to the rodeo out that way, you know, because I'd be behind him after I got through, and then we'd go to the next one. And, like, John Growney would be like, I saw that dog last week. Who's, is that your dog? The one with the brand on his hip? Yeah. You know, yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you how that dog helped me find my girlfriend, Krista. Too, okay. You know, she, okay. We were in Poway, California. I'd, I'd seen her up in the, in, the, in the top up there in the hospitality. So that night there's a dance. Yeah. I was sitting on a bale of hay, me and Bull, having a beer. And yeah. Both of us and watching the kind of the band and everything, you know, and, and it's, that same girl comes over and she says, is this your dog? And I said, yeah. She said, do you care if I pet this dog? I mean, he's so dang cute. Plus there's a creepy guy that won't leave me alone. And I said, absolutely. You yeah. come right on over here and pet the dog. I said, yeah. you're really cute. You want to be my girlfriend and try that out for a while? <laughs> 13 years later, yeah. she's still my girlfriend. Oh, you know, my it's goodness. crazy how that happens. That yeah. Is, that and, is uh, excellent. Yeah. yeah. But she, um, that dog, oh. when, when I lost that dog, he, he he was he was at Blue's trailer uh, okay. last year, and okay. he jumped out of the trailer. I mean, just kind of jumped out down the steps, yeah. and it, all four feet went out. You oh, know, wow. and I could just oh, tell wow. his old hips. You know, okay. and he, Doug, he just looked back at me and went over and laid in the grass. And he looks back at me and he says, "You know what? Yeah. I'm done with this crap. Okay. I, I can't." You know, when he was getting so old and he was getting to where, because I'd always turned him loose, and you know, I know Mikey would know this, but you could just turn bullet loose because if you didn't at six thirty in the morning, he never would bark. Yeah. But that big old tail, waka, 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 waka. Yeah. And he would go out about six thirty when all the guys are feeding and he'd go have coffee with everybody in every camp at the rodeo. He was going to go over and see everybody and be, yep. and be part of it, you know? You and so I got to where I just leave him out. Hell half the time I'd put out a lounge chair, you know, one of these folding chairs. Yeah. And, um, and he would sleep in it, and I could turn him loose at a truck stop. Yeah. He'd watch for trucks, go yeah. do his business, and come back. Okay. And okay. there'll never be another bullet, Hodges, no. you know. No. No. But when 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 he died, he he wouldn't let me, what I was telling you, he, he wouldn't let me put him down. Okay. He, we had left him at my at Lynn's house, my ex wife's house. Yeah, she would yeah. keep him. Yeah. She loved him much as I did, you know. You bet. And I've got pictures of him sitting in her lap with her coat on. Yeah. You know, with a barrel raise. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I think he just got tired of hurting and just get tired of being. And I just don't think he wanted me to have to deal with putting him down. So he goes out and gets under this tree. Yeah. And Carly had called Krista, my girlfriend, and said. I need to talk to you a minute away from dad. And mm -hmm. So she goes, she said, we can't find bullet. You know, mm -hmm. that second when she said that to me, I knew what he had done. Oh, okay. Doug, he went and got under a bunch of trees. Yeah. Yeah. And just died. Just died. got tired of it. Okay. He did make it inconvenient as hell, though. I had to cut him out from under it with a chainsaw, get all the limbs out of the way so oh. I could get him out of there. Oh, okay. He crawled up and yeah, under. That, okay. But that was, yeah. he loved the finest things in life. You bet. You bet. He had to have air conditioner, you know, and he was so, he was just this person, you know. You bet. And that, and we looked and looked for that dog that day yeah. on Saturday, yeah. Sunday morning. And, and I, I love God. I love Jesus. We have our own personal relationship. We argue sometimes. Right, right. 
So I'm sort of a seeing is believing. I need to see that pair of aces every once in a while to keep me playing the game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 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 I went to sleep at 6 o'clock, and, and this is documented. Christy can tell you and all the rodeo guys because I told them this story. Mm-hmm. That dog came to me in a dream at 6 o'clock that morning told me where he was. Oh, wow. And I had passed him about six times. Mm-hmm. So there was no way in hell I was ever going to go look under them trees I again. See, I see, I and he see. was buried so far up under there. He just didn't want nothing to mess him up, and he wasn't even stiff. But you know what I did? I went and had him cremated. He rides around with me, and he's right Isn't where he wants so? to be, in a dark place, left the hell alone. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. But How many but miles you, know, you and, reckon that dog had on the road? How many miles? Oh, he's a, he had to be a five million. Yeah. I mean, he, he went everywhere with he me. Went spent everywhere. a night in jail. You know, yeah, he, everything, yeah. whatever we did, yeah. bullet was part of it. Okay. He would ride the wacky worm roller coaster. What? The bullet would get on the roller coaster. He loved the wacky worm. Now you weren't gonna put him on the mind bender. Okay. You know what I mean? So we we're at we're at a funny story about him. We're two two of them carnival stories. I was in a. I was in Mobridge, South Dakota one time, and I knew some guys in a band up there, so I went down. They had a street dance down there by the river, so I go down there with them and uh, play some music. My phone kept ringing in the middle of it, and I thought, well, hell, everybody that's here knows I'm playing right now. You know, mm-hmm. it kept vibrating, so I finally get off stage here, and I'm looking. It's a 615 number, South Dakota, and I said, uh, can I help you? This is Robbie Hodges. He goes, yeah, hey, Robbie, we've got your dog. He's at the carnival. And I said, oh, gosh. I said, <laughs> I said, uh, is everything okay? He says, oh, yeah, it's fine. I said, well, what's he doing? He said, he's going up the slide with the kids and riding down the slide. <laughs> he's done it about 10 times. <laughs> But we don't know what to do. I said, I guess keep up how many tickets I owe you, and yeah. I'll come settle up when I get. He said, No, it's okay. We'll give him a wristband. I said, If you, he'll get tired of it. If he's not bothering you, and you, I said, You see that old white cyclone out there? Yeah. He'll come get that. He'll go back and lay on his patio when he's done. Sure enough, there he was when I got back. Oh, you know. Goodness. Oh my goodness. So the next time we're at Beaumont, yeah, at the rodeo yeah. a year later, yeah, and they have a like a media night, and they uh. They you do all the media stuff and then the carnival guy that owns the carnival turns the carnival loose to us. Yeah. So there's like thirty or forty of us is all okay. that's there. Okay. We ride all the rides. So instead of you know, they have a golf cart riding around. Yeah. And it was a rolling bar. Oh wow. So okay. We are all okay. hammered riding the mighty mouse. <laughs> yeah. The the scrambler. Yeah. You know, the 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 sizzler the zizzler the <laughs> snickles you know right well we get to the wacky worm and yeah. i want to get this picture or you know i just i wanted everybody to see bullet because i knew he could handle it so i put him on the inside i mean the wacky worm's a little bitty kitty one you know what i'm talking about it's yeah. got a little dragon on the front okay and it makes two little old dips okay so i said me and bullet are gonna go ride that in the in the guy running the ride he's like you gonna let your dog ride this? I said, Absolutely. <laughs> okay. He can't do it tomorrow. I said, I know. So I got bullet sitting on the inside where he don't get slung out, and I'm holding him. You know, yeah. we're just having this, and we're sitting in the seat together. I've got my arm around him, not really holding him, just letting him, you know, in case he slipped or something because of the plastic seat. Yeah. And we ride it, and I get back, and he looks at me, just as looks at me as you possibly can. Yeah. I said, you had enough. And he just looks at me. Yeah, yeah. Let's go again. Let's so go again. Go, I'll be done. And he rides it again, and yeah. he looks at me again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let's go again. By then, there's a bunch of people watching, and they gather around, and he's riding the hell out of That's this thing. Perfect. So about the fourth time, <laughs> he, uh, he looks at me, and I said, you ready to go? And he just gets down, walks right out. He's done. Yeah, he was done with it. But he, he loved the wacky worm. That, that was is. that was a. But the things he did, he would ride jet skis with me. He would whatever we were doing. He was involved. If we were if we were floating the river, he had to have an inner tube with a beer. He had to have everything. <laughs> but that dog yeah. did not have to he didn't have to be with me. Right. He never had anxiety. You bet. You bet. But he was gonna hang with his buddies, you know. And yeah. it was such a protector yeah. of little bitty dogs. One time one time at Eagle, Colorado, I remember uh, Todd Overstreet, he was a Dodge rep. 
Mm-hmm. And he named him because he had a little bitty dog, like a little weenie dog he'd travel with. Not yeah. me. I had a big little pit bulldog, <laughs> stupid thing, that thought he was a weenie dog. <laughs> He was chasing that dog around, and they were running about 40 miles an hour. Well, that Winnie dog just ducks and goes under Todd Overfield's trailer. Yeah. Overfield, not over street. Yeah. And you hear a bullet go, thunk, 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 all the way down the the, the rafters yeah. underneath that, yeah. the metal rafters yeah. under that trailer. Yeah. And after that, they called him Anvil Head <laughs> because he come out from under that thing. And then that same night, we were at the, like the dinner and he comes around the yard, and he has got a puppy, a little bitty, like one of them, like a miniature whatever dachshunds yeah. in his mouth. And I come around there, and I spit my beer out. I'm like, oh, my God, bullet, what have you done? I'm going to kick down. And about that time, the lady goes, oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-uh. uh-uh. Don't you say another word about that dog. There was a healer dog over there picking on my dog, and bullet got that dog away from it, went over there and beat the crap out of that healer. Really? Okay. And I said, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. He did not like you bullying little dogs. Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. and they would lay there and just aggravate the crap out of him. That dog loved life like I do. Man. You know, I think that was our, and if I had like the chicken in outer space act, if I had a chicken with me, that yeah. dog would lay there with that chicken and they just hang out. Yeah. He was just, yeah. God, I wish there'll never be another replacement. Never be another you know, people have tried to say, now there's here. Oh, look at this one right here. It looks like bullet. Two reasons. Yeah, one, yeah. He, there's a yardstick there that he'll never measure on. Right, Plus, right. I, I, I can't, I, I can't go through that again, yeah. losing my yeah. best friend. You know, yeah. I'm not ready yet. I'm sure I can one day, but yeah. man, wow. Wow. well, I hope Mikey was happy about my, my bullet. Well, I, I dog. think she's going to be a very happy about it. <laughs> what a cool girl. What a great family. Oh, and what it's a great so family. neat. I, I listened to your mm-hmm. deals there. You know, we mm-hmm. always, we all, we all would go to the Longhorn Rodeo together. I'm going to leave mm-hmm. you with one more funny story. Okay. With, okay. With, with Sammy. Two of them, actually. Do you remember <laughs> the year? I don't remember if you had already left from uh, – what's the one in New York we used to do? Um, Attica. Attica. Mm-hmm. I went back up and did Attica a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And actually played – me and Hugh Mitchell played the show after. Remember the little thing? I think you would already left by yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Because it was a pro rodeo one night, too, and they needed ah, somebody to come do it. That's right. So yep. I left Gary and came over there and did the pro rodeo that night, PRCA mm-hmm. rodeo. Mm-hmm. Okay. I jumped on – who picked up for him? That, Rob Wright. Um, Rob and any other one. Um, I want to say, was it Bobby Collins? He might one have been picking picked, up. Yeah, he might have been. Yeah, He rides by, yeah. and I'm sitting on – I wasn't even – I wasn't even – I hadn't even been announced yet. Spare my crowd. He mm-hmm. rides by and says, you want to make a ride? Mm-hmm. I jumped on the back yeah. of that horse, yeah. the pickup horse. Yeah. And we went and picked the guy up. Rob got the guy because he was pushing more. And I got the flank off of that <laughs> horse, and I just pushed off the back of that yeah. horse. Yeah. And when I did, I just pitched that flank to Sam said, here, put that in the flank box. Yeah, that was the right. coolest. And Sam just looks at me. <laughs> yeah. He like, did that on occasion, the, by the way. He did that on he occasion. He would just, yes, he would. He would just look and go, oh, my God. But the, the very best one yeah, that ever yeah. happened. Yeah. Gordon Brown and him were traveling oh, yeah. together. Yes, sir. Mike had already quit. You know, he or I ain't gonna say quit. He retired. You don't. You're not that good. You don't just quit. You retire. Right. right. And he, uh, <laughs> we were at Cape Girardeau, Missouri, on the Sunday perf, and I'd won the bareback riding. So you know what that meant? Come on, boys, let's go to the beer stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just come back to watch Saddlebrock riding and see Sammy and, and Gordon Brown. They were my two favorite people on the planet. Mm-hmm. It was the 25th year of that rodeo. And you remember Jerry Bellis, obviously. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Announcing it. Yes. The great, one of the greats. One like of he, the greats. And he says, well, ladies and gentlemen, you know, he talked just like this right here. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, if you'll pull out your tickets that we gave you prior to the rodeo, we're going to give away a $10,000 diamond pennant representing the 25th year of a rodeo here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ticket number two seven five eight three six. You're the winner. Yeah. And I'm sitting on that first shoot right there yeah. by the alley. Yeah. And I jumped off that shoot and I went. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, people are like, wait a minute. They throw their tickets down. And people are like, I said, what's them numbers? He said, two, three, five, eight, three, six. I said, shoot, I ain't got but one of them. <laughs> oh. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Bruce Larkey was setting up one of them portals in the second yeah. level yeah. with that cigar in his hand, in his yeah. mouth. Yeah. Have you ever watched the space shuttle take <laughs> off at night? <laughs> lots of lots of red glow, was there? That thing was glowing like you were <laughs> like a rosebud torch. Yeah. People are digging through the damn garbage cans, climbing <laughs> under the bleachers. Yeah. Trying to find their ticket. <laughs> and Gordon Brown and Sammy looks at me. Yeah. I'm not going to say exactly what he said. I'll yeah. leave the one word out, but yeah. you've lost your yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce Larkey is going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget. It. Bruce calmly came down there and said, Robbie, I think <laughs> you should decide about your choices sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to forgive you. Yeah. But. I don't think, Robbie, that that was a very good idea. <laughs> Please don't do anything like that ever again. That's how calmly he said it. Really? Not exact. No, Doug, no. that's not anything <laughs> like what he said. <laughs> you remember oh. Yosemite Sam? Hey, Rabbit, I've beat it. Ooh, rocket, smack it, nugget, lock it, smack it, lock it, nugget, rock it, snack it, mug it, pick it, snack it, mug it, lock it, snack it, rug it, lock it. But I'll never forget yeah. the look on Gordon and Sammy face yeah when i said i ain't got but one of them numbers <laughs> and jerry bellis looks over at genie who is his life support you, bet. you know forever you bet. you bet and they're still doing good and they're you know they're my mom papa still yeah, yeah and he looks over and says what in the hell do we do now yeah 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 and but i'll never forget that and every time me and sammy are together somewhere we always talk about that story you know and, and the way sammy did adopting those boys mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. You know, and you what bet. they had been through, and you, you know, you with Carrie and the and the mm -hmm. and just what an amazing story. Mm -hmm. But from what an amazing man, absolutely, you know, absolutely. How how do you how do you how do you measure how cool Sammy Swearingen is? You know, yep. what he's done, and man, always he always bucked me off. He'd laugh. <laughs> you remember that laugh he <laughs> yeah, did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he didn't always laugh at old Robbie though. Sometimes yeah. he looked with that look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where that head would turn when I yeah. would say stuff. Well, but he always hired me. You absolutely, know? absolutely. And the next time we get together. We're going to talk yeah. a little bit more about those looks. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Let's do that. You know what, man? I've yeah. had a great – how long have we been? An hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You remember when we said we are going to do this? It's going to be about a 40-minute yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. But the, the first with you, time there's you so mean. much. But the first, yeah, we the said, first episode. <laughs> if, we, if we do 40 minutes, 45 <laughs> minutes or something. Yeah. And, there's just so much. Man. There is so and much. I'm, there is so much. I'm, we haven't gotten to road stories. You know, there's the DOT yeah, in we Wisconsin. Haven't. Right. Oh, there's my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Next time. All right. Next time for mm -hmm. our listeners. Well, you Robbie, this it. has been a hoot, dude. This has been man, a hoot. I, I enjoy you. And, and I meant what I said when I'm telling you, you were power steering when I was working. <laughs> and I would give anything. And somewhere, maybe we need to do it. Maybe. Maybe. We need, we need to do one somewhere. Get the old gang just, back together. How about that? Yeah. The, you know old, the old I, band. I think that would be so amazing. You bet. And you got a show tonight. What time does it start? 7.30. It's on the Cowboy Channel app. Um, okay. It's a Pasadena Livestock Show and Rodeo. Yeah. And, and you uh, got a production meeting in 26 minutes. 26 oh, minutes. Oh, I do, Doug. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Sure right. do. And, and the next time we get together, I am interested, and I think our listeners would be interested, in, what is a production meeting? Okay? Next time we get together? You bet. Okay. Yep. yep. All right, Robbie. We'll do that. Be safe. Have fun tonight. And uh, enjoy yourself. You better believe, man. Right. I mean what I say. You're my okay. friend, and I, and I enjoy these conversations. Me too. Me too. All right, buddy. Be Take safe. Take care of yourself. You bet. All right. Bye-bye. 
We hope that you enjoy our podcast as much as we enjoy doing it. If you do, please share it with your friends. Help us spread the word. Share it on Facebook. To make your listening easier, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Search for Beyond the Shoots and follow us. And remember, check out the New York State Rodeo Museum Facebook group page and become a member. And we'd like to say thank you to Parasite Systems for their support of our podcast. Parasite System is a push-button parasitic diagnostic system for pasture animals, your horses, your cattle, goats, sheep, and chickens, and for your companion animals, dogs, and cats. You can find them at ParasiteSystems.com. And remember, we've got a coupon, BTC023, for 50% off your testing. So get online, use that coupon code, BTC023, for 50% off. This is Beyond the Shoots with Robbie Hodges. Until next time... Thank you for listening.